This is Colonel Poole from Colonel Poole's Georgia Barbecue in East LJ, Georgia. We are here on Capitol Hill, as you can plainly see, in Washington, D.C. This is our sixth time to be here to serve barbecue right here in the U.S. Senate building tonight from 5.30 till 7.30. The congressmen and the senators from North Carolina, uh, Mississippi, and Georgia, Georgia being the host state. And uh, what a privilege it is to be here. And as you can see, we're on video, we're on film, and this will be shared with ET3, ETC3 back in our town of LJ, Georgia, and other surrounding areas. So we have our entourage here. We are going to present sometime today to Senator Zell Miller the McCutcheon Pool Taxpayer Champion Award. And then later today, we're going to, uh, uh, going to, uh, I'll get it in a minute. <laughs> we're, we're going to present the Taxpayer Champion Award to S Congressman Johnny Isaacson, who is about to introduce the so-called sunshine pork bill. Uh, that is to put the pork in the sunshine and make them vote on it during the daytime and not the nighttime. Uh, and how appropriate that we should be here to bring our pork back to Washington which I have said earlier, this is our sixth time. And sometime today, I want to pay tribute to my brother-in-law who just passed away in Charleston, West Virginia this past week. What a great American he was, and I want to pay tribute to him. Also, we're going to be traveling around the campus here, the Capitol Hill, going to Saxby Shambliss office, and uh, uh, Jack Kingston, and Nathan Deal, who is our uh, congressman from the 9th District in Georgia. This is Colonel Oscar Poole speaking. I was just in Charleston, West Virginia for the funeral of my brother-in-law. You see his picture here on the paper, a full page uh, article on the front page in, of Charleston Daily Mail in Charleston, West Virginia. We had his funeral just two days ago, uh, March the 10th, I think, 2002, in Charleston, West Virginia at a Methodist church, and it was the first funeral I ever spoke at that was televised by two or three television stations. He died doing what he loved best. He was running the clock at the Charleston Civic Center and he had uh, labored there for 30 years. He was a man who was beloved. His influence was far and wide and I wanted to get this tribute paid to him here in Washington, D.C. at our nation's capital where he, uh, he loved so dearly. He was also Little League Baseball Commissioner in the state of West Virginia for 50 years. Can you imagine the thousands times thousands of kids that were involved in his career? He knew the Rod Hundleys in basketball and the Jerry West. They were neighbors of his. And my brother-in-law, Kenny Shock, I wanted to dedicate this uh, video to him here in our nation's capital. Uh, this is Colonel Poole again, and I'm here on this, well, across from the Senate, our nation's capital in, in uh, Washington, D.C., and I have on my left uh, Richard Esparza, who is our manager of Colonel Poole's Barbecue, and I want uh, Richard to say a few words, please. Well, I've been coming here since 1997. We began our, our visits here uh, back in 97, and uh, our trips here, we've learned from them. Every single time it gets, it gets easier and easier. As, uh, as we bring this pork back to Washington, so to speak. 
And uh, we, I, I would like to pay tribute and, and tell the folks with the Georgia Rehabilitation Center how much we appreciate them sponsoring us and bringing us up here uh, four of the sixth time. And this is our sixth time that we've, co that we've come. Four times with them. And the two times before that was Senator Paul Coverdale and also uh, Nathan, Nathan Deal, our congressman. Tell about that first time. The first time was the time that we learned about how not to bring pork to Washington. We learned that when we did all the work ourselves, it, it was tiresome, uh, it wore us out. Edna knows as well as I do, we did all the work. We had a few help, you know, we had some people helping us, but, but we did most of the work, Edna and I. And uh, we learned how not to do it, and we, we learned how to do it by using the Senate kitchen. And I'd like to pay respect and appreciation to Don Perez, who is head chef at the kitchen, and uh, let, let them know how much we appreciate them preparing this stuff for us all the other five times. All right, I have on my right uh, one of my best friends. He's a member of the International IFUPI uh, Club back in LJ, Georgia. And uh, I want Bob Leftwich, a good friend of ours and a friend of the barbecues, to say a few words. Well, Oscar, we've had a lot of good train rides together, and we've been a lot of places. We've been to New Hampshire together, and we've been to Miami together, and the Everglades, and places like that. But it's good to be up here with you. It's always exciting being with Oscar Poole. Uh, being around somebody with a yellow suit and, and a big hat, it just uh, attracts people. And uh, everybody up here in Washington knows Oscar, it seems, and he's taking this place by storm. Thank you, Bob. And one more word here, we have coming uh, Joe McCutcheon and Betty, his wife, they'll be here in just a little while. And also uh, my niece from Ohio, Lisa Tharp, who just happened to be here on the Capitol Hill today, the same day we're here. And uh, hopefully we'll get to say a few words to her a little later on at Senator Zell Miller's office where we're going in a, few, in a little while. And uh, also John and Kathy Harrison are going to be here. Uh, to add to our entourage, there are about nine or ten of us from LJ, Georgia.
Take that one. Take that one. Take that one. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I know. Oh. You already got this? Bright lights. Thank you very much. Oh, can I get one, please? Just have to hurry. Make it real quick. We have to hurry. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I think he's shown more political courage than anybody in history. Well, that's well, well that's great. Are y'all ready to go? Because what we what we uh, okay. what we said was um, he's had uh, something come up, so he said, Let, "Can we do it now?" Sure. And yeah. Then, and then yeah. Uh, that way we don't have to fool with it later. Oh yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. Y'all ready yeah. to go? We're ready to go. Okay. Ready to go. Yeah. I'll yeah. be right back. I'll bring him in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we're ready. Do we want to do this in front of the seat? Where'd Oscar go? Oscar, come on in. He's getting ready to come. Tell Oscar and Kathy, come on in. Good camera crew here, Betty, Kathy, John, Richard, and Bob. Well, I think this is great. Appreciate you taking care of us. No, not at all. You ever play football? Can you play football now? I can't play football for 10 minutes. I need to start running. Y'all, he'd like to do it in his office. Okay, sure. Yeah. Right up here. Yeah, let's yeah, For 35 years. When you started out with him up in the North Georgia, he supported me and said, supported you to me, said you wanted to be a state so. <laughs> Well, I appreciate that. And that's where you are. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you know that I come through right by your place I know twice a week. Yes. I can't get home without going back. Yes, yes. <laughs> so anytime you and Joe just want to block me off, you can. Well, we do. We want to we get you on my television program. <laughs> It's well, a good place uh, to stop. Oscar, where is your let's make the presentation here? Have it right here. Are we ready? Uh, yeah. Uh, I just want to say in, in, in all my career of studying politics, never have I seen anyone like Senator Miller with so much political courage. He's had the he sponsored the co sponsor the cut in the capital gains, the death tax. We would not have had the tax cut without this gentleman. No way in the world would, would George Bush have gotten the tax cut passed without Zell Miller. And in my opinion, in political history of the United States, there's been no greater statesman than Senator Zell Miller. He's the best friend of the American taxpayers ever. And Colonel Poole, let's present him with this great award. Thank you, Joe. This is the McCutcheon Poole Taxpayer Champion Award to Honorable Zell Miller. And I want these folks to see this with you. And it says, in recognition of outstanding leadership and statesmanship. <laughs> Which is true. <laughs> in championing the American taxpayer. Amen. The American free enterprise system and promoting the American entrepreneurial spirit. This award is presented to the Honorable Zell Miller, given this date, March 12th, 2002, at Washington, D.C. Joe Kelly McCutcheon, right here, and myself, Colonel Oscar Poole. Thank you. Well, I want, I want you both to know, and I want all of your viewers to know, that uh, over my lifetime, I've got a lot of awards and plaques and things like that. But I don't know if any of it means any more to me than this one. Because of who it comes from, two of my neighbors from Gilmer <laughs> County, my fellow mountaineers, and also because it has to do with championing the taxpayer. And uh, the taxpayer is the forgotten person yes. Amen. In, in American politics. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, we have people right now, they're coming up here in droves, wanting this and that, and all these things cost money. And where that money comes from is the poor old taxpayer. Amen. And uh, somebody's got to look after him. And I've tried my best to do that. Uh, I one time said that I never saw a tax cut that I didn't like. Amen. I, I, I'm, I'm for tax cuts. <laughs> if it cuts taxes for the rich, that's fine, because they're the ones who pay most of the tax. Amen. You I love it. that. That's true. If it, if, it cuts Amen. if it cuts taxes for the middle class, I'm for that, because they really need it. Yes, it is. And so wherever the tax cut is, Joe, Colonel, I'll be voting for it. Thank you. <laughs> Senator, you're great. I mean, what? there's never been a better friend of the taxpayer than Colonel Poole, and I'd, I'd be quoted anywhere in the world. This is the best friend ever of the American history of the taxpayer. I've got to ask the Senator one question. Do you recall the time I was in the Georgia Senate with Senator Bill Fincher? My wife and I sang a duet. He touched me, yes. and I led the, them into singing, leaning on the everlasting arms? Yes. You remember I, that? I, of course I remember that. 
Well, thank Your you. singing is unforgettable. <laughs> 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 well, you know, I, I'd like to ask Senator Miller one question. How, how did, where did you get the, I know you're in the Marine Corps, the incredible leadership to stand up to members of your own party for the tax cut, the capital gains, the elimination of the death tax, and all the great things you've done? It's incredible. Well, I think it comes from being a, an independent mountain man. I, I think you know those folks up there. You yes. know them just like I do. And uh, they're, they're very independent. Yes. Well, I come out of that same kind of independence. I'll tell you something else. Yes. There's not... Uh, Many days go by that I don't think that uh, I'm here because Senator Paul Coverdale yes, dear yes. Friend. Left, us, yes. Yes. left us in a very untimely and tragic way. And uh, Paul was a friend of mine. We worked together in the state senate for years. And uh, I, 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 I want to do, I want to be the kind of senator that Paul Coverdale would approve of. Well, you <laughs> certainly are. He, you, you're just great, really. I mean, you can't and stand up. One further things. word, final word. Moby, whom I talked to this morning, said, "Tell you hello." Good. And uh, who else said? said who else sent Joe you? Joe Williams, Gaines Radio. O O V O V Lewis. Oh yeah. You How know, do you know him? On the boat. I was on the bo boat cruise with him. <laughs> and I was going to know there, but I know more about you through O V Lewis. <laughs> well, he knows a lot about. <laughs> it was all good, all great. Good. Well, he's a well, good guy. Well, Joan, I'd be quoted on anybody. This is the best. This is the best guy in history. For good. Uh, player, really. Good. I mean, <laughs> nobody's better, Alec. Alec, nobody. And thank United you for States. this privilege. Senator. Well, it's yes, my sir. privilege. We appreciate thank it. you for going to the trouble of coming by to see well, me. Thanks for giving me this award. If they, if they uh, stop me for speeding as I come through, <laughs> now, can I show them this and it might help me out a little? <laughs> you know who we have right here? Here's Betty McCutcheon, uh, Joe's wife, and there's Kathy and John Harrison. John owns a telephone coming to the television station. And the, and the new ETC3 television station. And there's Bob uh, Leftwich. He's a great counselor in the middle school system. Great guy. And there's my manager and Richard right here, runs the Richard barbecue. Esparza. He's the one that will feed you when you come. Well, the only thing we're missing is a little barbecue. <laughs> oh, you that we got it downstairs. <laughs> it's over at SC3. I mean, S SC5. I, I, I listen to a lot of these talk shows. I listen to Hannibal Cohen's. I listen to O'Reilly. I listen to Larry King. I listen in the morning on C-SPAN. I listen to them. I'm a, I'm a sort of a groupie that way. And when I hear that familiar voice, whenever they said we've got a call from Gilmer County, or whenever we got a call from Ella J, I know I'm going to hear that familiar voice. <laughs> and it does me good. Thank you, Senator. Well, I really appreciate you, really. Well, you keep them straight. I will. I try. And, I, and Alec, we couldn't have a better man for the taxpayers. They're number one in the history. And what a statesman. I mean, the goal he I, don't, I don't know anybody I'd rank second to him. I really. I mean that. For the taxpayer of America. Really. I mean that well, sincerely. Number one, Joan. All right. All right. No thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel. We yes, appreciate sir. it. Thank you, Colonel. Thank you. Thank you for this. You're welcome. Thank you, Ellie. We'll see you tonight. Our pleasure. So good to see you. Have you ever seen this? No, I haven't. This is my other one. Um, I saw it on the internet. I saw it on the internet. Um, got it. He was, uh, he always kept the time clock rolling. Everybody knew him in Charleston. He had a huge We've already been there. This is not somebody left, okay? okay. There's no story in, in the Gazette. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Gazette is the one where I read the quote of the line about how old it when I read the quote. It wasn't real clean. I'd like to get this on the TV. Oh, okay. Um, this is Lisa. We got sound. We got okay, sound. great. We got time? Yeah, we got sound. We got sound. All right now? Yeah, we're on camera. Yeah, you good speech. This is Lisa Tharp. She is my wife's niece from Ohio. What part of Ohio? Central Ohio, just north of Columbus, Ohio. And I'm a lobbyist and legislative director for Ohio State Grange, which is a fraternal organization. And she's also the niece of the man I showed you folks earlier here. If you had to hold that, okay. Kenny Shock in Charleston, West Virginia. And you couldn't make the funeral because of being here. But can you believe we've met in Senator Zell Miller's office? I know. I only get to see him maybe once a year when he comes up to Mount Vernon. And uh, so, but I'm planning to make a trip to his uh, restaurant because he does have the best barbecue in this end of the world. So it's great. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. No, this way, guys. This way. Yeah, that's Senator's office. Okay, since you've been there, you know where to go. Good to have It's good to have you on film. He's a real good conservative. She's too far ahead of me. Can, who's in Canada? Dreyer and, and Paul. 
What room is dryer in? Dryer's in uh, 237 and Paul's 203. Same four, I see. The Rayburn Building, but who's there? My Rayburn, Rayburn Building is... Uh, yeah, yeah, deal to 2437. You what? 2437. 15 minutes. Well, she never knows. And Alex is 2428. Hey, Rayburn Building? Yeah. But now, we need to check Richard that. Richard is a good driver. Well, I said they moved. I just relax. I didn't worry about it. What's your number? 2428. Think about it. I think every... Next Every road between Kingston's Longfellow, Longworth. That's 1507 Longworth. That is terrible. Kingston? Yeah. 1507. And Chamley's 1019 Longworth. State, state, you realize how much better I am. I think it's a great honor that we can present the McCutcheon Pool Award to taxpayer champions like Senator Zell Miller, Congressman Nathan Deal, Congressman Johnny Isaacson, Congressman Ron Paul, and Oscar, we've got to elect, continue to elect more free enterprise taxpayer champions. Don't you agree? And we just came from honoring Zell Miller with the first taxpayer champion. The first champion. in history for the McCutcheon Pool, the first award to Zell Miller, a great taxpayer champion. And Oscar, I don't know anybody who's had more courage to stand up for the American taxpayers than Zell Miller and fight for less government, less taxes. What a great American. I agree. I'm sure glad to have you here. It is great to be here. Of our and today. we're glad to have Johnny, Kathy, and Bob Lethwich and the good camera crew here and Richard. It's a great day in America. And we are from LJ, Georgia. And we love it. All right, this is Colonel Oscar Poole here again, right here in front of the nation's capital. We've come back for our sixth time to bring barbecue from Colonel Poole's Georgia Barbecue in East LJ, Georgia, the home of the Taj Mahog, the Hog Rock Cafe, and the Pig Hill of Fame. I have our entourage here. I'm so pleased to have some of the great folks from Gilmer County, Georgia, right here. Uh, Joe McCutcheon, who will say a few words in just a moment, a uh, few words. And then here's uh, Betty, his wife, over here. And uh, next to her is Kathy Harrison and John, her husband, John Harrison. Uh, I've known these folks for a long time. In fact, I was uh, John's pastor for a good, good many years, wasn't it, right. back there. It's so good to have, and they're the owners of the ETC3 TV station and telephone company in our little town of uh, LJ and East LJ in Pickens County, wherever it is. And uh, <laughs> here's uh, Bob Lethwich. Say a few words, Bob. I'd say I'm proud to be here with Joe and you and this great entourage of distinguished conservative citizens from Gilmer County. And uh, it's been uh, really enlightening to be here with you. Thank you, Bob. And I have here our manager. This man right here in this beautiful suit, uh, Richard Esparza, would you want to say a few words? Absolutely. This is the sixth time, Colonel Poole, and, and I appreciate the guests that we have here today. And I, I not only think, I'm thankful for the sixth time, but I think it's going to be the best time. Absolutely the most wonderful time. Thank you, Richard. And without Richard, I could, couldn't do this. He drove the truck up here with all the barbecue and uh, delivered it this morning. And now we're going to go over to the congressman's office. But before we do, I want to Joe, Joe McCutcheon. Uh, he and I the, are giving the McCutcheon Pool Award, Taxpayer Champion Award, to several congressmen and a senator today. And so, Joe, say a few words. Oscar, it's great to be here. You know, you've heard of the Boston Tea Party. This is Colonel Poole's Tea Party. We've got too much government and too much taxes. And, Oscar, what we're trying to do is reward those congressmen and senators who will stand up for the taxpayers like Senator Zell Miller, Congressman Johnny Allison, Congressman Nathan Deal, Jack Keeson, and many others. And we need to encourage more Americans to get out and support those politicians who will cut taxes and cut government instead of those who will increase their taxes and increase government. And don't forget, we brought the port back to Washington. Yes, sir. And we want, to, we want to eliminate pork barrel spending. We hope Johnny Allison's legislation, which is fantastic legislation, will do just that. You mean the Sunshine Pork Bill? Yes, sir. We're going now to some congressman's office, and we thank you very much. It's a great pleasure, pleasure, and honor to be here in Washington, D.C. All right, on to the owner. Are you sure? And uh, this is.
this is this the, this is the camera crew. We want to present. I mean, Ron's not here. We want to give it to you since he's not here. Okay. Taxpayer Champion Award. And for Ron. Yeah, okay. for Ron. Where can we go? Where we get the cameras here and everything? You just want to put the, you know, you put the cameras out in the hall or wherever you like to go. I guess the hall. Let's go out in the hall. You're the gentleman who sends us the news. Yes, yes, Georgia. yes. Get yes. Georgia. Yes. 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 LJ, LJ. 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 I thought it was a LJ. Yeah, and, uh, tag, Ron, when's Ron coming? When's he coming? Uh, sometime this evening. You tell him I came by. Uh, okay. Sure. Um, Y'all ready? Yeah. Really. It's an honor and pleasure to present to Jeff Deist the McCutcheon Pooh Taxpayer Award for being a great friend of the taxpayer, Jeff. We really appreciate what Ron's done for the American taxpayers. Thanks I don't know of anybody in Congress that does a better job for the taxpayers. How many taxpayer awards has he got? I know he's gotten a Numerous. lot. Numerous. He's gotten uh, every, every major taxpayer award you can think of. You got one more. Uh, Anything from National Taxpayers Union on down. Okay. Well, what can we do to stop por a pork barrel spending? Johnny Alexson of Georgia has come forward with some legislation mm -hmm. to stop pork barrel spending. I'm sure Ron would support that. Well, I guess what you could do is send people to Washington who don't want to spend $2 trillion a year. Right. Um, that's the big answer. The short answer is uh, they locally, district by district, try to elect more liberty-minded yes. folks to Congress. Right. Well, this is Colonel Poole. You want to say anything, Colonel? No, I just, you have done that. We are so glad. Jeff, to we appreciate it. Okay. And tell Ron Thank we you. came by. Okay. Maybe we'll see him again, okay? Sure. He's here Thank, late today. Thank you okay. so much. Right. Appreciate it. So much. Thank All you. Right. We're going to honor Congressman David Dreyer, one of the great champions of the American taxpayers. Right America. Let's go. Let's go. We've got to do more. I think that having James Carville and Paul Begala replace uh, oh, on, on, on cross on cross yeah. would be great for us. <laughs> I do too, yeah. Because I mean to have, you know, that serpent head. And I had dinner, <laughs> I had dinner I had dinner with his bride Saturday Mary, night. Mary, I know I was yeah. on her program saying oh, I'm sure. sure. Yeah, I had dinner I had dinner with, uh, with her at the gridiron Saturday night. Yeah. I sat right across from her and I said, you know, I think that this is gonna end up annoying to our benefit. I said, unless you can turn that husband of yours around and get him to be more than engaging in ad hominem attacks, you know, naming all the demons on the Republican <laughs> Party and all, I said, we're gonna we're gonna end up uh, we're gonna end up benefiting greatly. So uh, I heard, you know, uh, I will tell you that every time I hear that Ella J or even Georgia is, is named on one of the programs, I know exactly who's gonna be calling. And I, I really appreciate you giving me a tribute on Fox all the way across the world. I appreciate exactly. that. Well, I mean, and, and the thing is, um, I remember one of the first times when, uh, the, the reason I learned your last name was yeah, when I was you. watching one Saturday morning yeah. when Bob Franken recognized your name and he yeah. said, oh, it must be Joe McCutcheon when he was doing those stand-ups yeah, for the early Saturday morning on yeah, CNN taking right, questions right. about what was going on here. Yeah. And he did that, and, and so that was when I first heard it. And then, and then, you know, I talked to you, and then I, obviously you've got a very distinctive voice. And I want you to know that your ears should have been burning because last week uh, Johnny Isaacs introduced me before over at the Capitol Hill Club for a breakfast we had for the National Republican Congressional Committee, and he told me all about your bank of televisions and everything. <laughs> well, that's the nail on the television station. Yeah, he gave me a full report. He gave me a full report on it. And I will tell you, Ms. McCutcheon, I don't know how you do it. Does he do anything other than follow those things? <laughs> Is that about it? <laughs> a little bit? Take football. Tech, uh -huh. Georgia Tech. I love Georgia oh, Tech. that's great. Well, that's great. Davey, we want to present you an award here. It's a great honor to present David Dreyer, a great friend of the taxpayer, American Free Enterprise Champion, the McCutcheon Pooh Taxpayer Award. I don't know oh, anybody well, in Congress yeah. who does such a great job for the taxpayers. <laughs> He's got great people right. skills, you. a great leader, and maybe someday sure. be president of the United States. Oh, God forbid. Because he'd be a great one. Yeah. I mean, he would be. Well, thank you, you very much for this. And everything. Thank you very much for this. Well, I will tell you, we've got lots of work ahead. And the, the key word you've got right in the middle here is free enterprise. And I will tell you, one of the quotes that I like to use, the founder of the Democratic Party, whose statue I look at every time I descend these stairs to go down to the, to the House chamber, um, had in his first inaugural address, which was on March 3rd of 1801, and it was Thomas Jefferson, and he gave to me the best description of the role, and looking at, looking at the certificate here is what made me think of it, the best description of the role government should play. He said, my fellow citizens, a wise and frugal government shall restrain men from injuring one another and shall leave them otherwise free to regulate their own pursuits of industry and improvement and shall not take from the mouth of labor the bread it has earned. This is the sum of good government. Democrats. And he was the founder of the Democratic yeah, Party. Yeah. And you know what? He's spinning in his grave yes. thinking <laughs> about the gang here, 
of you know Teddy Kennedy and Dick Gellar Dashiell, and Tom Dashiell, Dashiell and awful. that whole gang yes. who are obviously completely misrepresenting that vision which he set forth yes. in his inaugural address. And you all have encapsulated it right here in this certificate, so I appreciate it very, very much. Thank Thank you. About the death, any, how about the death tax? Any possibility? Well, of we, we, I will tell you, in our leadership meeting a week ago today with the president, he was very enthusiastic when we mentioned the prospect of making it permanent. Great. Because he very much wants to make that happen. And obviously, I mean, it was very difficult for me. I had to tell my mother that she had to live another 10 years, but I would get a whole <laughs> plug on her in that, in that year. And she rolled her eyes. You know, my mother's a very, here's a, here's a picture of my, my mother and my uh, stepfather right here. So you can see she's a very fit, oh, uh, yes. Yes. beautiful woman. She and, sure is. Yeah, and so she, uh, so, this one. so she, yeah, you can get a picture of that. Oh, so this is my mother, and I told her that she had to, I told my mother, I said, well, mother, I said, you have to live 10 years, but I'm going to do you in in the 10th year. So I, I, uh, I threatened her right there with that. And uh, so we want to make it permanent so that, you know, so that I don't have to knock off my mother. You know, yeah. I mean, this is, this is going to be a very important benefit of this thing. Thank you. Well, well it's we great really to see you. Appreciate Thanks your very time. much. Thank you, Congressman. I don't know if I get yeah, this a guy here, here. like that. My God. Let's tell you a little story about him right quick. He started with nothing today. He's a millionaire. Hard work in the free enterprise system. He's what a great representative of small business. Wonderful. He's well, you spent guy. a million dollars on that suit already. Yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> it's worth a million dollars. Yeah, <laughs> I can tell it. That much. I can tell it. I can tell it. I can tell it. Well, we really appreciate well, your time, Congressman. Thank you. Appreciate what you're Thank doing. Thank you very you're much. Great. You're a great American. Keep calling, okay? You're a great American. Thank you. Yeah. And, and so, tell me, do you watch every program at once? I mean, you keep them all going. <laughs> no, no, no I, I just I have certain ones that I call. I see, you know, see, I like. Uh, well, but the thing is, how I've been on Wolf. I've asked you several times on Wolf. Right. Oh yeah, on on late edition. Yeah. On late edition, and then he's doing the evening shows now. Yeah. In the Fox one. I like Rita Cosby. I called you on Rita Cosby. That's what I was on. Oh, she's a, she's a track. Right. Do you yeah. like Rita? She's yes, liberal or conservative? Uh, or can you tell? I sense, I sense that she's pretty conservative. Good. Uh, Good. I just, you know, I, you know, I see one of these people with the yeah. different social things around here, and I ran into her at a lunch, and a lot of these people nod when you're talking, and you really can't tell if they really believe what you're saying or not. And uh, but Rita nodded when I was talking to her privately, yeah. you know. Yeah. And, but there are a number of them. I mean, there are a lot of closet yeah. conservatives Great. Um, who are in the media, and some of them come forward. In fact, right when we won the majority in 1994, there's a guy who's occasionally on the Fox Channel. Well, he's a, he, he used to anchor the Fox Morning News here. Okay. And his name is Brian Wilson. I've heard Great of him. Great big yeah. tall. Yeah, I know he is. Yeah, yeah. 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 He's yeah. often on the Fox News. Yeah, I've seen him. Yeah, yeah. He's a stand-up yeah. reporter. Yeah. He's from Texas, and right when we won our majority, he came up to me and he said, "I just wanted you to know I'm a Republican all the way, That's and I've been I have been my entire life." But uh, so there are a lot of people out there who do think like we do. And I'm, I'm so lucky. I've just gotten a, a new reporter at a paper out in Los Angeles who, who, who just told me flat out, he said, you know, I agree with everything that you're doing. He's writing really favorable articles That's out right. in LA. So I think that we're sort of with you and, I mean, there's only one Joe McCutcheon, I know that, but <laughs> other people out there who are trying to put our message out and uh, ask the right questions, I think that we're, we're winning. And obviously the leadership of President Bush has shown is just phenomenal. So... I know that y'all are very proud of well, you. Well, we appreciate you. How do you Thanks stay so thin? Going. Man, I'm amazed. You well, got to run five miles a day. Something like that. Something like well, that. Well, it's nice to see you all. Right. Yeah, we're going to have to see Jack King. I've known this boy since well, how old. we're doing the same business. Good. Uh, I don't know, know since what? I was. You young boy. You, you worked at <laughs> a school there when this, I was an old This guy school. right here is Spiro. Oh. Um, oh. Uh, no, it can't Amber. 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 Right, right. I've known this boy since I taught school over there at General Bluff, Georgia, <laughs> with his mother, who was our school secretary. Right. And he, he just happens to be here today. To one or two o'clock in the morning, all the time. Okay, all right, and uh, hold on a second, hold on a second. Have second, you got good second. sound? Yes, yes, let me get you in focus there, and hold tight. Hold tight. And I'm rolling. We were in Congressman Nathan Deal's office right now, the ninth District Congressman of uh, Georgia, our Congressman, who is a dear personal friend of ours, who has been to our barbecue many, many times. And uh, there is a picture of the original barbecue, or portions of it, up there at the Pig Hill of Fame. We still have that hill. Still have those pigs, still have that pig mobile, uh, but we don't have the, the place as such. It's been replaced now with a new building, but now we own the, all that mountain back to the next street, and Nathan Deal is the one who got us to Washington in the first place. We fed 450 people right here in this building, 
under with Nathan Deal support and Chris Riley. I want to get your name in. I didn't forget you. Okay, thank you very much, Nathan, for having our picture right here in the foyer of your office. We, I'm so proud. I don't know what to say, but thank you. And we're going to present Congressman Deal with the McCutcheon Deal Taxpayer Award oh, yeah, tonight. We're excited oh, about yes. that. A great friend of the American taxpayer, Nathan Deal. That's right. Thank you. Let me get it. Real quick shot of that for the B-roll. we're gonna make a documentary of this, and we'll send you a copy. Great, that's so great. Now, uh, cable television. Coverdale had one in his office. When he died, his wife gave it to me. It's, I have it back now, in a nice frame. And Bob Barr's got one in his office. Joe, we're gonna make a documentary of this, and we'll send you. That's where we're going to ask really, isn't it? Yes, 1207 Longworth. You want to present it? Oh, hold, hold on a second. Before you present it, okay. I got a little. Okay. J O H N N Y. <laughs> this will be onion pride. Look at him. He can spell the hard one. Um, Isaacson, he just did without asking. That's the one everybody <laughs> goes crazy on. <laughs> You know, Johnny, the day after your election, you. remember our conversation? Yes, sir. I do. And I had a strong hunch, and you kind of dodged this. I told you later, and this may not be appropriate, but I do the no. unappropriate, inappropriate things. I saw anybody in yellow suit in the morning. <laughs> I, I knew that you were going to be a great statesman. Oh, well, and I tried to tell you that then, and I'm going to take you right now in the presence of my entourage. <laughs> <laughs> I I'm glad you brought these lovely ladies, too. And gentlemen. And gentlemen. You know, John and Kathy own the telephone company and the television company. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Where we did the interview. Yeah, exactly. Well, speaking exactly. of which, I got to get my special thing here. Y'all sit down and be comfortable. Okay. I'll come in back there, Stephanie. Yeah. Okay. Trump, can I sit over here? Sure. Don't we want some ladies over here in the picture? Too? Come on, some lady. Beauty? Yeah, come on. I, I want to call you Johnny. You should. That's what everybody else does. <laughs> I guess I just will. I always have. Uh, the Congressman, it's a great privilege to be in your office. My privilege to have you. We've had a great day. My association with this good man and all these fine folks here is, uh, we think, very spiritual. And uh, we're, I'm not trying to sell more bar barbecue. You don't have to. It's good enough. It sells itself. Well, we appreciate it. And knowing you as a friend, and the thing I like about you, number one, I think about Johnny Isaacson, and I've told you all out there, apart from all the taxpayer championship stuff, which is great, is that you personally are likable. And Moby, our mutual friend, I talked to him this morning, and he knows about our being here, and he has known about this for a few weeks. He said to make, sh make sure I tell you hello from him. Moby's a great guy. So it's my pleasure to be here with Joe. He'll say some things about the presentation, but uh, what an honor it is here. My wife will be here today, but we had a death in the family. I'm sorry. Charleston, West Virginia. I uh, <coughs> just had the funeral on Sunday. I had to come around by there. And uh, just a great honor to be with you today. And we bless you, and you're invited back to the barbecue. And Whatever you need to do, have a running ice in your day or something like that. Well, anytime I get within 20 miles, I'm in <laughs> Well, I just want to say, uh, I want to, uh, Johnny, I want, we want to give you the McCutcheon Pool Taxpayer Award. Thanks. You're a great taxpayer champion, a great friend of the taxpayers, and I think this legislation that you're proposing, which will put sunshine on pork, is the greatest legislation since the Revolutionary War because both parties are spending billions of dollars on things such as million-dollar outhouses, which are totally a waste of taxpayer money. And I think it's wonderful that we have a congressman like Johnny Isaacson who has the political courage to come forward and take on members of his own party and try to do something about the incredible waste of taxpayer money. So it's our honor to present to you the Pooh McCutcheon. Look, before I do this, Johnny, we it's our sixth time to be up here and do this. Is that right? Well, I'm sixth, honored. Sixth time. And I thought this year we wouldn't come because I was afraid the security wouldn't allow us. Right. And I was sure we're out down there wrecking leaves in Florida at my Florida place. <laughs> and so one day the phone rang, Tom Bill said, you want to go, to, go back to Washington? I said, yes, before I knew what I was saying, I said, yes. Uh, but uh, 
Uh, man, I forgot what I was going to say. <laughs> well, I don't know. There's a good story award. going on. <laughs> so, uh, oh, yes, our, our sixth time to be here. And we've called it every time. Colonel Poole's taking port back to Washington. Right. So now with this impending legislation that you, that you were involved in, and I know it through Joe and a whole lot about this, we support this, we endorse it, and making it, I'm going to call it Sunshine Port, in case, if you've called it yet, have you called it that yet? I haven't called it that yet. In fact, I'm going to get into telling you a little bit about it. But in case you do, which, you know, I'm... That sounds like... And a good you've heard of the Boston Tea Party. This is Colonel Poole's Tea Party. This is the pork right, party. Right, the pork party. The, tea, so, the taxpayers are upset with all this so waste. Johnny, so, this is uh, our well, award to you, the McCushion Poole Taxpayer Champion Award. And it's a great honor to get this to you. Colonel, thank you very much. Joe, thank you. Thank very you, much. Johnny. I, You're a great I'm, friend of the taxpayer. I'm on a put there right. Taxpayer champion. I'm going to get Ashley to take care of my framing. And I want to, since y'all were coming, I've kind of planned this. Uh, I'm very honored that you came. I'm looking forward to being over there and having some barbecue tonight in SC5. Joe, when I was on your show, yes. um, I don't know, five you or six weeks ago. You told about the $50,000 Well, we, that's right. Well, <laughs> actually, and now we got to we got to share credit. Actually, what happened? Joe started talking about what can we do about this the wasteful projects, and we talked about building a cruise ship in Mississippi yeah. Bay Harbor and the fifty thousand uh, dollar consulting fee for tattoo removal, which nobody can. And I told Joe an honest statement, which I always try. To, I said, Joe, I voted for that. I didn't know I voted for that, but I voted for that, and it prompted Joe's questioning. And, and and my giving him an honest answer, yeah. and it's on film. So it yeah. uh, prompted me to say to think, and Joe and I start talking. You know, if I vote wrong, I ought to know I did it. Sure. Yeah. You know, and if I when you vote right, and I put that in quotes, you do know you did it. And so I started. I suggested, and Joe, what we probably ought to do is change the rules to keep the last minute rush. To get home, amen. Added appropriation, so the sun light of day shined on it. Because nobody would have voted for a fifty thousand dollar tattoo parlor up front fee. by itself. But three hundred and seventy-five people voted for it, not knowing it was there. So, in honor of that occasion, which once again proves what I and Kevin's heard me say this many times, we get far too much credit and sometimes not enough criticism, sometimes too much, but we never, we get far too much credit for good ideas that really end up coming from citizen participation in government, which is what Joe McCutcheon does, and Colonel Poole does, and, and, and others that participate, they ask questions, they, talk, they try and educate people on the issues. Well, this piece of legislation right here, which I'm getting ready to sign, which we have to do before it goes to the hopper, is a three-page it's a bill, but it's called a resolution, and it'll be assigned a number, and I'll get right. you that number right. in a couple of days. Right. But I want to go through, and I'll read you two paragraphs. <coughs> this is after all the governmental legalese. It shall not be in order to consider a conference report to accompany a bill or a joint resolution making or continuing appropriations unless the joint uh, explanatory statement of the managers includes a separate part that clearly sets forth each item of appropriation added by the committee of the conference to fund a new program project or activity and the program project or activity to which it relates or the chairman of the committee on appropriation causes such matter to be printed in the congressional record before consideration of the conference report. Now, great. That's a lot of legalese, but let me wait to tell you what it says. In October or November, or in the case last year, December, when you have these 13 budget units, the, you know, defense and education and all that, <coughs> that have been floating around and been passed on both sides, you have conference committees. Then you get toward the end, we usually end up, now last year we did not have an omnibus bill, but you usually end up with an omnibus bill, which means you have four or five of them get lumped together. Mm -hmm. Everybody finally agrees, and then and all of a sudden they call everybody in to vote on it. There, and, and the bill is maybe that yeah, high. Yeah, full of pork. 
Nobody, well, no, that may not have half full of pork. It may be that high with that much pork, but that much pork is money that's taxpayer money. Yeah. You can't read that many pages. You can't know what's in So this says, and I want to repeat this. That's great. A joint explanatory statement of the managers includes a separate part, which means they have to pull out of the bill, that clearly sets forth each item of appropriation added by the committee of conference to fund a new project program or activity. Great. The conference committees, and Kevin knows this, that, that's where everybody agrees on the differences between the House and Senate. It's running down to the 11th hour. And good people, I'm not being critical of anybody, but that's how projects that wouldn't pass the light of day end up making it. Now, I have no problem. Every congressman, including myself, ought to be able to, uh, uh, to recommend anything that they think is in the best interest of their district. But it ought to be able to pass the sunshine test. Amen. And I think if I think if everybody knew that this is going, wasn't going to be something that three months later we found out about when it's too late, but understood that every member of Congress would have a chance to know before they voted, yeah. then what it will do, it will retard people putting in superfluous uh, like the tattoo. Approach, like that type of thing. That's great. So Joe, in your honor, and with Colonel Poole and these lovely ladies and the people from Ella J here, I thought that we would take this original. And then I will uh, make it official. And I, just and I think this is the greatest Thank legislation you. offered since the yes, Revolutionary is. War for the taxpayers. And Johnny, I think you ought to get Kevin. I think you ought to make sure he gets national press for this. Well, now you got really? to you got to remember no, one I mean thing. That. It's going today for me. I'm going to take. I have lined up some people to co-sponsor, and I'm going to work on building some co-sponsorships and drop it in before I leave on Thursday, so we get some additional people mm -hmm. sponsoring. The, the, I learned a long time ago, and I appreciate the credit, but when 218 or people are a majority, one person can't do anything, and it takes 208 pe people over there mm -hmm. across the hall to amend the rules, because this amends the rules of the House. This is this is serious business. You're Fantastic. Right? And so we got to get a lot of people behind this to get to the 218. And so I'm going to try and build us that base. I'll send as we get names. I'll Great. get them to you. And we're going to try and have a good number of co-sponsors. And then, although government is slow in its process, we start the ball rolling today, and hopefully by election time this year we'll have us an improved procedure. Is, is so David that, Dreyer for it? I haven't talked to David because I wanted to get it. We just finished the final wording last week, and I'm going to talk. Of course, his committee will end up getting it. And, uh, but I'm going to get a lot of background for it and try and give people the chance yeah, to really great. take a good look at it. So thank you, Joe. Well, thank you for doing this. This is incredible. But I think you ought to get, Kevin, I think he ought to get, I know you don't care about the credit, but you, no, but why, why hadn't anybody else besides you in history done this? Well, the, the answer to the truth of the matter is they probably have, but they didn't pass it, and we hadn't passed it yet. No, I know. So what we got to do, and but Kevin, I, I want you to make uh, Joe a copy of this. So he, oh, you got it. Okay. Kevin's, Kevin's on, on the ball. Kevin is on the ball. Well, well, I, they, 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 they're the ones that made me look good. Well, no, you, I think it's great that you've shown the political courage. I've, I've never heard of anybody doing it. I mean, your time, you've been up here, nobody's done it. I've never heard about it. Well, we had a rule in Georgia. You know, you have to give credit where credit's due. And one good thing about experience, it's not the only teacher, but it's probably the best mm -hmm. teacher. Mm -hmm. The Georgia legislature has a 24-hour rule, which is where this idea mm -hmm. came from. But the Georgia budget, even though voluminous, in 24 hours, you can find a problem. Mm -hmm. But uh, here we have no room. I mean, they can make an agreement. Five minutes later, we're over there voting. Okay. And Let so, me ask you a question. We meet with Judy Woodruff tomorrow at one thirty with CNN and C-SPAN at four. What can I say, or would you allow me to tell say Judy that? that you met today? And okay. That you want to show her a copy of the bill? Okay. And, yeah. And, 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 and the whole purpose of this bill, you got it exactly right. Mm -hmm. This bill doesn't criticize anybody. This bill doesn't tack anybody on. This bill just says that. If your family is considering spending its money, it would never sit down at the table and keep from everybody expenditures exactly. you're going to make. Yeah. The family of Congress should know at the end of these conference reports if items that didn't go through the process get added at the last minute. Yeah. We can make a judgment. We can vote up or down. Yeah. But ignorance of that fact should not be excused. <coughs> I think it'll make 
appropriation presentations more honorable. Oh gosh, yeah. I think it'll 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 add some fiscal restraint. Oh, it will. And it'll make people think twice. And every time I've thought twice about spending money, I've always done better when I only thought once. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, Johnny, let me ask you this then before we leave. What's the? And I know you don't know. Nobody knows. But what do you think the odds are of getting it through? I, mean, I know that's a damn difficult question. But what is? Well, what do you think? I think if we handle it right. Um, and, and do what I, which is why I'm explaining it the way I'm explaining it now, that we're not uh, like the $50,000 tattoo parlor. The easiest thing for me to do is to wave that flag and say this is going to cure that, but then all that does is trivialize the effort. Mm -hmm. There are a lot bigger expenditures of $50,000 that have been made in sure, the history of Congress sure. that probably shouldn't have been made. Of course. So okay. what I think we do is we say, don't you think the government ought to manage its process of budgeting the same way you do your household, and that is you exactly. consider every fact. Johnny, what should we say or not say yeah, about right. this? We don't want to yeah, hurt we wanna, you. We want to help you. Hurt you. You, you won't hurt me at all. I, th I think the... I think the thing to talk about, because we're in this unique position in our country where we've gotten to balance budgets, and now with CBO's estimate, even this year with the $48 billion for the war on terror, yeah. it looks like revenues have come back. We're going to have a balanced budget and no deficit this year. And six weeks ago, we thought there yeah, might correct. have to be one. That's correct. But this is maybe even more important in good times and bad, because when you're flush with money, it becomes, well, spend it easy. It becomes yeah. easy to spend mm -hmm. it. And this is... I think the thing, this is a common sense discipline that makes sure that appropriations for special projects see the light of day before they're adopted. And people can make an informed decision. That's, that's the, that's the that's way great. to put it, Colonel. Good. Could you, Kevin, would you mind making, I want to give Judy Woodruff one, I want to give Steve Scully C SPAN. Johnny, I've got to. Hold on a and getting up to speed. Okay, now. Johnny, I've got to say, I raise a question. Have we come to the kingdom for such a time as this? Now that's eerie and scary, but very challenging. And uh, I am excited about what I've heard you say here in this, in your office today. I'm very proud of you. Thank you. And uh, you have my personal support all the way. And uh, we want to help you in any way we can. Well, I appreciate you, Colonel, and my good friend, Joe McCutcheon. Y'all are, are what this country is about. You know, we're a republic. I'm a representative, and I'm, I'm elected to come up here and represent the people of Georgia in my district. But as I said in our meeting, most good ideas come from citizens who challenge their government to do better. And that's what y'all do. And in I'm, the right spirit. And I'm most surprised that I'm supporting you like this. I never dreamed I'd be a, you'd be one of my champions, but you really are. Well, you never know. You know, when you get to be 57 years old, you, if you <laughs> hadn't gotten some wisdom by then, you're never going to get it. So maybe I've gained some over the years. Well, I just want to say I think it's great that Johnny's shown so much political courage. I think this is the greatest thing done. Could be since the Revolutionary War, yeah. Oscar, for the taxpayers. And yes. I just think uh, Johnny doesn't want to take much credit, but he deserves a lot of credit because he's the one that's showing the political courage to take on members of his own party and the Democrat Party. So, Johnny, I'm just thrilled with this. I'm fired up, energized, excited, and thank God for you. Thank you, Joe. <laughs> thank you, Colonel. Thank you. Thank you. Be up there, image with the barbecue. Hey, man, shake your hand. I'll find it. I'll shake your hand. Are you? Good to see you. Nice to see you. Right to see you. Thank you. Go on, eat your food there. Oh boy, this is good. I'm sorry, I wasn't there. That's a deal. Great place. It is. It is. Great to see you. I'm glad y'all got to come by. Great to see you. You got Nathan here. Oh. Yeah. You got Nathan. You got Nathan. You got Nathan. You got Nathan.
Cardinals who's watching the tour. I said, well, six and a half. How'd you do it? Very good. Very efficient. When did y'all come up? Yesterday? Yesterday, yeah. My wife had a fit that her, her brother in law died. No, her brother died. Mm. I'm tired. My brother in law died. <laughs> <laughs> and I went to his funeral. It was the first televised funeral that I ever participated in. And my, my brother in law, he was a very outstanding leader in his community in Charleston, West Virginia. Oh. He was a little league baseball commissioner for half that state for 50 years. Oh you can imagine. Thousands times thousands of kids grew up, some 40 and 50 years of age now. Okay, we're ready? We're rolling. Okay, roll the oh, We're ready? Yeah. It is a distinct honor to have my congress, our congressman, Nathan Deal, the Honorable Nathan right Deal right. from the 9th District of Georgia. And uh, Nathan, uh, I can't tell you how much I appreciate that you we're the first one, <laughs> you talk about putting us to work. Back there six years ago, this is our sixth time to be up here, Joe, in Washington, D.C., and we call it the Colonel Poole Returns the Port to Washington. Excellent, excellent. And Nathan, uh, you have our picture, the, the, the early picture of the, of the Colonel's barbecue. There, the old shack. Shack added to a shack to a shack in your office. That's right. And we came by today and and got a picture of the picture. <laughs> These guys right here. Uh, and so uh, this is being very personal, but much more I could say. But you have been a conservative champion, and I have followed your voting record, and I'm so thrilled to, to know you as a friend, but also of the stance you have taken on many issues. I, wish, I won't go into that now because of the brevity of time. But it's my distinct honor to present to you the McCutcheon Pool Taxpayer Champion Award. Now, Joe wants to say something. Yeah, I just want to say I think it's a great honor that we have a congressman like Nathan Deal who's willing to stand up and fight for the American taxpayers and vote to save money and to fight the great pork barrel spending that we have now in Washington. And it's really a thrill to have my congressman, Nathan Deal, and it's an honor to present this award to him. Nathan, you've done a great job for the taxpayers. Well, thank you, Colonel and Joe. Thank you both so much. It's always a pleasure to have you in Washington. Uh, it's, it's nice to be able to go back to Georgia, and of course we all take advantage of that. Every I do every weekend to get back to the mountains of, of North Georgia. This is a distinct honor. I appreciate it very much. Uh, we are engaged in a battle up here with regard to how we budget and how we spend the taxpayers' money. And it's always nice to know that I have constituents like the two of you who take a very vocal position on trying to keep us uh, <laughs> within our bounds in terms of the way we spend federal dollars. Uh, because federal dollars are really our dollars. They're everybody's Amen. taxpayers' Amen. dollars. And uh, I appreciate the fact that uh, both of you uh, would see fit to award this to me. I do appreciate it. And we invite you to come back to Washington again next year. I'm afraid we will. Thank you, Nathan Dill, a true taxpayer champion. Thank you so much. Uh, this is Susan Miller here. That's right. From uh, Anniston, Alabama. And she lives in Oxford. <laughs> And she knows Darwin. And this will be on our video for our barbecue. Oh, okay. He'll see this. He'll oh, he will? Okay, good. And tell them uh, what you told me about the granddaughter. Okay, my granddaughter runs around with your granddaughter. You hear that? In Oxford, Alabama. Her granddaughter runs around with my granddaughter, Darwin's daughter. Brittany? Yes. And she works at barbecue stuff. So oh, does she? This past okay. weekend. Oh, okay. So okay. this is for Darwin Pool. <laughs> All right, this man is Wayman Poole. That is correct. And where are you from? I am from Johnson County, Georgia. Johnson County, Georgia? Where is that? That is Kite, Georgia, right next to Lascar County. And you're Colonel Poole. I'm Colonel Poole. Colonel Poole. As designated I'm... by the Alabama militia. Alabama? <laughs> and I'm Kentucky. <laughs> and we live in Georgia. And we're kinfolk. We gotta be. He's my, we are. Our counties are joining each other. That's right. We both work the crowd, love people, and I love his barbecue. Thank, thank you very much. Thank You're you. welcome. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>
Yeah, that's right. How long have we known each other? Oh, gosh. Five years at least. Chris Smith. I like him and admire him and love him very much. Okay. Been in barbecue many times. Best in yours. Thank you very much. We're going to endorse him, <laughs> Press Secretary. We're going to endorse him for the United States Senate against Cleveland. And I'm the number one this call television talk show in the country. And so, do, so does Oscar. So we're going to endorse him. Uh, when you're ready, yes, uh, we are relatives. Pretty significant. We're all. You missed Harvey, I'm sorry. You ready? No, no. Go ahead, sir. Okay. It's an honor and pleasure to be here tonight with Saxby Chambliss, who will be the next United States Senator from Georgia. And it's my honor and great pleasure to endorse Saxby Chambliss in his race for the United States Senate. I am confident he will be a great senator. He will represent the taxpayer. He will fight for the free enterprise system. And it's a great honor and pleasure today to present with him present with Colonel Pooh, the McCutcheon Pooh Taxpayer Champion Award and Free Enterprise Champion Award to represent his Saxby Chapel. It's our next United States Senator. And Saxby, we're, we're so happy to, that you came tonight to receive this award from myself and, and Joe McCutcheon. And I've, I've liked, somehow, I don't know how, but I've liked you ever since you had my seat on the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> I've explained that. We were headed to San Diego for the GOP convention in 96, but it's a great honor, a good old South Georgia guy. And you asked my roots down there. Absolutely, I know that. I'm not from there. I'm from Florida, <laughs> but my roots are down there. And uh, so I'm glad to join with Joe to endorse you as the next senator of the United States of, our, of Georgia. And it's a real pleasure to do that. And so here's the McCutcheon Pool Taxpayer Champion Award given this okay, day. Wow. And Thanks, when elected senator, is it not true that you will fight night and day for the American taxpayer? Well, Joe, let me tell you, one of the commitments I made to the people of the 8th District when I was elected back in 1994 was that if you send me to Washington, I promise you that I will not raise your taxes and I will fight every single day to lower your taxes. And as a United States Senator, I make that same commitment to the people all across Georgia. Fantastic! <laughs> you know, uh, the one thing that, that I have learned in my eight years of being a member of the United States House of Representatives is that the people in my district and the people that I talk to all across our great state realize they pay too much money in taxes. Amen. And uh, you know, whether it's income taxes, capital gain taxes, whatever it may be, we've got to continue to, to fight hard to make sure that we reduce those taxes because every time we do that, every time we put more money in people's pockets, yes. it allows them to provide a better quality of life for them and their families. And we wind up having more tax revenues come into Washington because a lot of people will spend that extra money as they should on their families or for education or whatever. So, uh, Joe, I, I just can't tell you guys, you've been good friends of mine for many, many years, and I appreciate this very, very much. And we look forward to being the next United States Senator from Georgia and working hard for people all across our state. Thank you. The next United States Senator from Saxby Chapman is a great friend of the American taxpayer. Thank you very much. Very good. I think I'll start okay. because you, you've got the punch lines. <laughs> guys, look this way. Say cheese. Tell us when you're ready. Shake hands with him. There you go. Right this way, Joe. Okay. Uh, come on. Hold it. Keep holding. There we go. You know, as More. much money as you guys make, I would think you could do better. <laughs> <laughs> you can, Let me tell you something. I'm, I'm, a not, I'm not well paid. <laughs> One more time. And chicken. Yeah. And this is the only Jordan. You know, Oscar, this is the only Jordan on the Appropriations Committee. Good deal. That's, that's power. No ready, Georgia. Not Zell Miller, not Max Clay. Don't you hold the camera. Okay. I mean, the microphone. You ready to shoot? Uh, we are rolling. Are we close? Yeah, okay, three. Okay, get three. <laughs> it is my great honor to be here in Washington, D.C., with uh, Colonel Poole's return to Pork to, to Washington uh, for the sixth time. And we have the great congressman from Savannah. Uh, what district? First district? Well, it's the first district, a little bit of the eighth, a little bit of the third, and part of, probably part of North Florida with the way Roy Barnes and Lord have lines. mercy. <laughs> but I must say to you, uh, Jack, that I know you through our friend Joe McCutcheon. 
who is truly himself, as you know, the best friend the American taxpayer has. And uh, it's an honor to join with him to present to you this McCutcheon Pool Taxpayer Champion Award given today, March 12, 2002, at Washington, D.C., from Joe Kelly McCutcheon and Colonel Oscar Poole. Colonel, I greatly appreciate this. This is a great honor. We're going to uh, display it proudly. And, and Joe is pretty persistent. You know, I know you, you go back to the restaurant, you got to work. Joe stays on that phone, and he harasses me to death. And if I go one time wrong, I know about it. Not from Joe directly. I just get 50,000 phone calls. And Joe, have you been on Rush Limbaugh again? Well, I, I told him you voted wrong last night. And so. Uh, um, it, it's good to have friends like you guys because y'all y'all keep your eye on us. Every, everybody has to earn everything, so this is this is a great honor. Well, I just want to say that Jack Kingston is truly a great friend of the American taxpayer. I had the honor of meeting him about ten years ago when I first met him. I said he could be president of the United States, and I feel that way today. I think Jack that you're not only a great congressman, you Jack Kingston could be president of the United States, and it, it, nothing would please me greater than to get out and campaign for Jack Kingston for President of the United States. One of the greatest friends of the American taxpayer, a free enterprise champion, and a person who's got as good a people skills as any person I've ever met. Jack, congratulations and proud of you. Joe, so, thanks a million and uh, appreciate everything you do. Now, with that endorsement, all I need is about $100 million. <laughs> well, Kirk, and we'll start right here, right Kingston now. Kingston for President, right here, ladies and gentlemen. That's Kingston a lot of barbecue sandwiches. We appreciate you, Jack. And Robin, we love Robin Ridge, the greatest press secretary oh, yeah. in America. We love Robin. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you.